Hello everyone, we will continue the topic Webdyne Pro ABAP and we are covering component usage as a part of Webdyne Pro ABAP. We already finished with two component usage. We already covered OVS, then we covered ALV and now it's a turn to cover select options. You all know what is select option. Whenever we want to provide a range of values, whenever we want to provide multiple values, we always go for select options. So now our topic is how we can create select options in WebDyne Pro app. app. Suppose if I already show, if, suppose if I show you already developed application, suppose I'm running this WebDyne Pro application. Into this WebDyne Pro application, we have a range of sales order number. You can see we have sales document number. This is low value. This is high value. And you all know we have a multiple selection button also. Yes, same thing is there. In reports also, whenever you are going for select option, you have low value, high value, and you have a multiple selection button. Same to same, now we will develop in WebDyne Pro app. Now the best part is, yes, we need to perform some set of static steps. Suppose in case of OVS, we performed some set of static steps. In case of ALV, we performed some set of static steps. Now same is with select option also. We need to perform this set of static steps and we will be able to achieve our requirement. So firstly, I will create a WebDyne Pro component. I will go to SC80 transaction code and I will create a WebDyne Pro component. Suppose my name of the WebDyne Pro component is ZWD, suppose underscore demo, suppose underscore select options. So I am creating a web Den pro component to explain or to show the demo on select options. Yes, I will create this web Den pro component. Suppose I will give the description. Demo on select options. Yes, this is web Den pro component. You all know by default, WebDen Pro component is appearing in the window name and view name is by default main. I will go for OK. I will save this as a local object. And now I will activate my WebDen Pro component. I will activate. And we will go for our first step. First step is same which we did in ALV also. Remember during ALV, what we did? We created a layout element and what is the name of that layout element? View container UI element. Word itself is saying it is a container for another view. We created the layout element view container UI element. And in that, we displayed the another view. And what is that view? ALV table. Same case is within in case of select options also. We will create a view container UI element. And in that view container UI element, we will display the select options. Yes, because word itself is saying it is a container for another view which is used to display another view. Previously, the view was ALV table. Now the view is select options. So I will simply go for the view and we will create a view container UI element. I will go for the view. This is our main view. Yes, I will go to the change mode. You all know matrix layout is always preferable. I will go for save. And I will create a layout element, view container UI element. I will simply right click 
insert element suppose my name of the view container ui element is suppose i will write sales underscore vc view container ui element what is the type view container ui element now i will go for save so our first step is done we simply created the view container ui element which is used to display another view and in our case now it is select options now what is second step you need to include a webden pro component into your own webden pro component topic itself is component usage it means we are using an existing webden pro component into our own webden pro component during ovs we did the same thing wdr underscore ovs during alv we did the same thing as alv underscore wd underscore table now in case of select option we will go for wdr underscore select underscore option and how we can include in our web 10 pro component i will simply double click on to web 10 pro component yes i will give some name suppose name is select underscore options you can give any name it's totally your wish and what is the name wdr underscore select underscore options we will go for save so we done with the second step also we added this wdr select option component to our own web 10 pro component now we will move on to our third step whatever the component usage we defined now i will simply simply include at the view level how how i can include at the view level i will simply double click on the view i will go to the property step we defined at the component level now i am going for using at the view level how i can use at the view level i will simply simply go for the properties of the view and i will go for create controller usage and you will be able to see yes we are able to see same to same thing here now i am including at the view level so our third step is also done we simply defined the controller usage, whatever the controller usage is there in the properties tab of the view. Yes, we used the properties tab of the view. Whenever we will go for four step, you will automatically realize why, why I am including at the view level because we will write the logic after that yes you cannot write the logic if you will not include firstly we include at the component level now after that i include at the view level so what is the summary of this particular video in this video we started with the next component usage that is select option you all know with the help of select option, you can provide range of values, multiple values. Best part, yes, again, we need to perform some set of static steps and we perform three steps into this particular video. Firstly, we created a web then pro component. We created a view container UI element. Yes, you all know why we are creating a view container UI element so that we can display another view into that in case of alv our another view is alv table now in this topic our another view is select option after that we simply added this web then pro component to our own web then pro component now whatever you added at the component level after that i am adding at the view level and whenever we will go for next step in the next whenever we will go for next step in the next video you will realize why why i include at the view level because we need to write the logic based upon that if i will not include at the view level 
we will not be able to write the code. So we have done with this first three steps. Now in the next video, we will simply move on to other steps and then we will simply check up. So that's it in this video. Thank you.